Most people wonder what is the most important blood test that they can have. And probably all of you would agree, if we did a national poll, that it's probably cholesterol. That's probably the first thing on your mind. And one of the other questions you would have would be, what are the optimal ranges and what do the numbers mean when your doctor says your bad cholesterol is elevated or your good cholesterol is down and so forth? These are really important questions because most people rely on the cholesterol testing as an indicator that they are in either good or bad health. Here's the good news. We can tell a lot about your cholesterol picture. Here's the bad news. Cholesterol means absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, we honed in on this as a test to do three decades ago, thinking that cholesterol was a big implicator of heart disease. It isn't. I'm going to pause there for a moment and let you let those words sink in. Cholesterol has nothing to do with heart disease. Now, many of you know this because there's been a lot of controversy about cholesterol and its role in heart disease. And as a result of all this controversy, you've become aware that some people believe that it is and some people believe that it doesn't. The evidence is overwhelming that a Elevated cholesterol has nothing to do with heart disease, but I'll come back to that in just a moment. What is important are some of the parameters that come back on the lab test that many doctors don't even bother to look at. For example, triglycerides and HDL cholesterol. That's sometimes called the good cholesterol. There is no such thing as good and bad cholesterol. That's just a concoction that the labs came up with in order to explain what these tests mean, because everybody wants to know about their cholesterol. So if you have some word, cholesterol, being used, presumably you can have a bad cholesterol, because some of you believe that you do, and then that means you need to have a good cholesterol. But they're not true. There is no good cholesterol and there's no bad cholesterol. But there is HDL, so-called cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol. And together with another measurement that we do called triglyceride, these give us a very interesting picture about what your cardiovascular health might be. But importantly, and this is what I want to stress, importantly, they project into the future what might be your risks for developing cardiovascular disease later in life. Now, I want to talk about these in, in detail. The triglycerides are made up of fat and sugar, and the word triglyceride actually means three sugars. So when fat, one of the parts of fat, is attached to sugar, glucose, you end up with a triglyceride. And that is how all fat is stored in the body. When it's released back into the bloodstream, that tells us whether or not you are storing fat or whether you are simply developing a large amount of this substance in the bloodstream and it can't be got rid of. That would be a very big warning that you are doing something wrong with your diet. And here comes the next surprising piece of news. Mostly that comes from eating carbohydrate. All that wonderful, wholesome, healthy grains you were told to eat are nothing but sugar. And fruit is another contributor to this. Fruit is just simply nature's candy. At the end of the day, there is nothing lovely about fruit. Human beings are not primates of the monkey part. We are a separate part called Homo sapiens. And we evolved in a way that avoided eating fruit because we couldn't get it. And we didn't go back in the jungle to fight gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutans to steal their food away. We started eating animals. And as a result of that, a big change occurred for us where we didn't need to have sugar. Now, there's a whole other story about whether sugar is important for energy, and that's too much to discuss now. But let's just say that when you have a diet that's rich in sugar, in bread, pasta, pizza, beer, fruit, sweet potatoes, rice, white potatoes, you have a diet that's really high in carbohydrate. And once the body has used just what it needs out of that diet for its energy needs, all the rest of that gets stored as fat. And it's carried around and transported and stored as triglycerides. So triglycerides are a very good indicator of whether or not you're eating too much carbohydrate. 
all carbohydrate gets turned into sugar. So I want you to think about that. That piece of bread is sugar. An apple is seven teaspoons of sugar. Big surprise, would you put seven teaspoons of sugar in your coffee? Probably not. So the next part of this is looking at the HDL cholesterol. This is the good cholesterol, so-called. Where does that come from? Well, it's part of the transport system of fat. And again, it's telling us what is in your diet. If you have a diet rich in saturated animal fat, the very fat you were told not to eat, your HDL cholesterol will be in the optimum range. The people today who have a very low uh, HDL level are those who are typically avoiding fat. Amazing. The American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics just came out with some new guidelines, and one of those was don't avoid saturated fat in the diet since there is no link to that with cardiovascular disease. Something again that's completely different from what you've been told for the last 30 years. But current research shows that it has not in any way contributed to cardiovascular disease. Indeed, saturated fat is healthy. What is not healthy are the vegetable fats, with the exception of two. Olive oil is healthy and coconut oil is healthy. But the other vegetable oils are called polyunsaturated fat. If you see polyunsaturated fat anywhere, run. Don't eat it. That is the fat that rusts. We call it oxidation. But just think of it as nice shiny metal gone rusty. You don't want that inside your body. And in fact, in the coronary arteries, when they're plugged up, we mostly see oxidized polyunsaturated fat. By the way, margarine is full of it. So when we get these blood tests, the cholesterol testing, we can tell a lot about what your future risks will be for cardiovascular disease. We can tell what you're eating. And that is very important because from there, we can give you constructive advice on your diet and your lifestyle. So I hope that helps explain a little bit about how the cholesterol testing works.